that's for our souls, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, we begin with the first Jews of the Quran, or actually we, were, we would start perhaps last night. Some of us may have started reading the Quran last night uh, and continued this night. But nonetheless, we all began our readings with chapter two of the Quran, chapter one, of course, Surah Al-Fatiha, and chapter two of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. And in that vein, we need to reflect a little bit about what we're reading about as we enter the realm of the Quran, renewing our connection with the Quran, renewing our commitment to the Quran, renewing our commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen and his love. And also at the same time, we know that the shaitan is quarantined and the shaitan is restricted from having as significant of an influence upon us as he normally would be. And to that effect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins his book by speaking about the origins of the human beings and giving us a case study in the examples of resurrection after death. And the core problem of what is true in terms of belief, and also uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights what will come to be known as heart disease or spiritual heart disease. The, the disease of believing or saying that we believe in the message of Allah, but not really conforming to the standards of what is required of a believer. So these two things frame our entry uh, in the into the Quran and the very first Jews and the second Jews, and then the direction of the Quran, the story of the human being, the problem of heart disease, spiritual heart disease, the challenge of the of consumption, and specifically how to live and structure our lives. And to that effect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us in these few uh, Jews of the Quran, one and two, and then of course we're going to continue reading through the week and we'll update give a summary of that next week as well, inshallah. But suffice it to say that our entry into the Quran is one where we explore and we are introduced to two different roads, basically. The roads of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do, the path of what he wants us to do, the path of the righteous, the path of those close to Allah, the path of the guided, and then the path of those that, well, for lack of a better word, earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's displeasure the path of those that choose misguidance. Those two paths become very clear to us, and Allah gives us case studies in that. And on the way, as Allah takes us step by step by step on that journey where we are introduced to the path of truth, the path of falsehood, the path that is close to Allah, the path that's distant, on the way, Allah tells us what he likes and what he doesn't like. Allah Ta'ala tells us, for example, that he's, we, we learn from the very beginning that Allah tells us that he's with certain types of people. For example, he tells us that he's with the sabiri and Allah sabiri, that he's with those that patiently endure, patiently persevere, patiently push through, patiently continue. And patience is invoked more times in these opening series, in these opening chapters of the Quran than Salah. It was very interesting. Patience is invoked and mentioned more times in the prayer. Patience also is not only about uh, continuing to persevere in doing the right thing, in staying on the path that Allah loves, but it's also inherently important in avoiding the things that will are on the path that are characteristic of the path that Allah doesn't love. So there's two aspects of patience, one that's a push and one that's a pull, one that pushes us and urges us to continue on the path of Allah, and one that's a pull that pulls us away from the path that, are, that is distant from Allah. So that's why those two paths are clear in the Quran. There's case studies of both. And then at the center of both of, of those paths, or going back and forth, is sabr. And so Allah tells you he's with those that are patient. So patience is a push and a pull. It's very active. It's, well, sabr is not very, very, very static, right? very passive. There's also patience in endurance as well, not only perseverance, but endurance, and that's where we have tr Allah test us with trials and afflictions, where things happen to us that are beyond our control. And so we have to endure, we have to push on. 
And Allah Ta'ala is with those that are patient. He's also with, he tells us as well in these opening chapters, another repeated theme is that he's with the people that are mindful of him. In Allah Ma'al Muttaqeen, Allah Ta'ala says more than one occasion as we enter into the Quran. So conscientiously, the awareness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, us thinking about Allah Ta'ala, in a sense, is what brings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closer to us, not in the actual sense. But we are actually propelled into greater proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the spiritual masters, uh, the masters of the spiritual path in Islam say that the greatest crime that the abd, that the servant of Allah can do is to forget Allah. That there is nothing worse than forgetting the one who in reality never forgets you. And there are various forms of forgetfulness. The greatest forms of forgetfulness is shirk. And the lesser form or the smallest form of forgetfulness is just heedlessness, ghafla. So Allah tells us that he's with the muttaqeen, with those that are mindful of him. And so mindfulness of Allah Ta'ala is something very serious that the Quran wants us to cultivate and certainly something that Ramadan uh, helps us do. But mindfulness of Allah is one thing. Patiently enduring and persevering to please Allah and to stay on the path of Allah is one thing. So earning Allah Ta'ala's presence with us is one thing. Earning his love is a very different matter. And that's why the second most important thing that this opening series in the Quran, these few verses and few surahs, chapters in the Quran, uh, uh, reinforced is who Allah loves. And Allah Ta'ala explains that he loves the muhsineen. So he's with those that are patient. So Allah's support is there. Allah's with those that are pious, that, that remember Allah Ta'ala, that are conscious of Allah, his support is there. But then Allah's support is one thing, but his love is very different. He loves those that choose to do beautiful actions, uh, uh, aesthetically uh, beautiful and spiritually fulfilling actions, the muhsineen. And those people that are muhsineen that Allah Ta'ala speaks about, what are, what's the core element that renders somebody a person of ihsan? What is it that we, in, that we encounter in these first few chapters of the Quran through case study, through verses, through example? Uh, Allah Ta'ala tells us that it's those who, are, who, who repent and turn to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, the tawabin, those who return to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, and also those that are mutatahirin, those that constantly purify themselves for Allah. So these two characteristics earn Allah Ta'ala's love. This is what we are taught. One, repentance. And this is what every single night and every single day in Ramadan, we should ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala for repentance, to, ret to, to return to us. And we should declare our returning to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala and ask His forgiveness of us. So this is the repent, the process of tawbah is very important in the daytime through the saying of astaghfirullah and in the nighttime through, uh, through, uh, through the night prayer, through a tarawih or after tarawih before winter uh, in, in salat al-tawbah in the prayer of repentance. And then Allah Ta'ala says, in yuhibbul mutatahirin. He loves those that are constantly in the act and the process of purifying themselves. So purification, brothers and sisters, you know, when we think of purification, the, the closest reference to us oftentimes is the wudu, right? Wudu is an act of purification. And a wudu is essentially an event. It's something we do, you know, at a, at a moment and then we're done with it. We have wudu. Later on in the day, we may break our wudu. We go back to the sink or go back to the kitchen or not to the bathroom and whatnot. And we replenish our wudu. So for us, sometimes we think of purification as an event. This is not the way the Quran approaches purification. And also, if we look at the stories of the NBA, the stories of the Prophet, the stories of their followers, and other case studies, which we'll come to, we see time after time that purification is not an event. It's not something you do sort of one time and that's it, you finished. It's a process. It's a path. So when Allah Ta'ala says that he loves those who are purified or that purify themselves, then what he's saying is that he loves those that are constantly in the act, in the process of purifying themselves. Those that are constantly in the act of cleansing themselves. Those that are constantly in the act of reflecting on their shortcomings and trying to remedy those shortcomings. That person who is constantly living life 
um, understanding that they're works in progress, that they're never finalized, that they always have to improve and do better. These are the people of Tahara. These are the people of constant purification. So when you're constantly working on yourself, constantly trying to improve yourself, you, you, you're seeking help with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reforming yourself. And you know that you are not perfect, even if you're 40 or 50 or 60, you know that you're constantly in the process of being you. But one of my teachers used to say, at what time or when do you become you? When are you you? You're not you when you're 30, you're not you when you're 35. You're not you when you're 40. You're not you when you're 45. If you're constantly growing and living, Allah gives you life, then you're constantly becoming more and more and more you. The you you are at 40 is not the same person you are when you or what you were when you were, for example, 15 or 20. You're very different. So you become who you are, the you that Allah knows that you are. You become you at the moment of death right at the moment where you're not, where you have passed away that's when you become finalized and until then you and i of course you're in your works of progress we're all works in progress so allah ta'ala wants to see that on that journey as we are becoming more and more of who we are as we are discovering as you are discovering the you that the the, the mindfulness of allah ta'ala is there as well and that's guiding you shaping you molding you, fashioning you, cultivating you to be a better form of you than the you that you could be, the alternative you that sends you to the hellfire. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said when a person, uh, that every person has two homes in the afterlife, one home that's in heaven and the other home that's in hell. And when they die, they inherit one of those homes and someone else inherits the other home. So the you that you want you to be in the Akhirah, that you in Jannah, that's a work in progress. Every day we're working towards that. And what helps us is the mindfulness of Allah. What helps us is turning to Allah. So that's, Allah doesn't, is not saying that he loves people who are perfect. There's nowhere in the Quran that says that. He loves the, loves the act, the road to perfection. We never reach perfection. We never finalize. The moment we are, you become you, you die, right? So you're never complete until right at the moment where you're about to be complete and finalized, then you die. So Allah wants us on the path. He doesn't want us perfect because there is no perfection. Only Allah is perfect. What he wants us to do is be on the road to perfection and understand that we are human beings. We are people of, 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 of gross uh, uh, shortcomings and misunderstandings. And so to that effect, these opening sections of the Quran, these opening juz of the Quran, one, two, three, they're full of two roads. Right. The road of do, the awamir, what Allah Ta'ala has commanded and instructed us, do this. And then the roads of don't do that. And so under the do, for example, there are verses about hajj, there's verses about uh, halal eating, there's verses about the qibla, there's verses about Ramadan, about the prayer, about uh, you know leaving a will, uh, about uh, spending. How do you spend your wealth? About what is halal wealth? About, the pro, uh, about buying and selling. Uh, about waste, um, uh, about entering into Islam. When you enter Islam, enter Islam, you know, wholeheartedly and completely, not halfway, for example. Um, uh, uh, verses about supporting your children, versus being respectful of your parents. All these things are about doing things, doing the right things. That's the road to perfection. That's the road to you becoming the you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see and is pleased with. And then there's the other road, many verses and chap these opening chapters of the Quran also contain uh, the nawahi, uh, the things that Allah has prohibited, the things he doesn't want you to be. If you're on that road to being you, that's the wrong you. Uh, and so that's where Allah Ta'ala talks about, you know, uh, riba, and that's where he talks about wasteful things. That's where Allah Ta'ala talks about the consumption of alcohol and, uh, and intoxicants and, and port, pork and eating the wrong kinds of meat, for example. And that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talks about uh, 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 improperly uh, procuring and consuming uh, other people's wealth. And the wrong kinds of marriage, for example, marriage to uh, an idolater, apologies, joking with uh, the words of Allah. That's something that comes out in these opening chapters of the Quran that we don't joke, that the wrong path is joking and, uh, about Allah's words and not taking them seriously and playing around with the words of Allah uh, and, and, and dishonoring your parents, for example. Those are examples of the wrong path. So these two paths, 
as the as we are entering into the Quran in these uh, couple of days, are now opening up to us. And as we continue in our exploration of the Quran, these paths will unfold more and more. Uh, the veils uh, that 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 make these paths a bit obscure, they'll start to be thinner and thinner. We'll start to see and better understand the road that's called, you know, the Sirat al mustaqim you know, that the, the path of the righteous, the entire Quran is about showing us what the path of the righteous is. Um, the path of those that, that have earned Allah's pleasure, not the path of those that have earned Allah's wrath. Uh, and, the, and both paths are clear. So in the end, what we want to do is uh, we want to we want to start off this Ramadan and start off our exploration of the Quran the way that the Quran tells us to start off, right? The Prophet used to say, Abda'u bima bada Allahu bihi. Start, you start with what Allah starts with. And first thing is that Allah starts with Bismillah. And so you start everything in the name of Allah. And not just in the name of Allah, but with the conscious awareness of our relationship to Allah, our responsibility to Allah, our obligation to follow Allah Ta'ala's book and his command and his messenger's way, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we can't do it ourselves because the other thing is that the Quran starts off, particularly the second juz of the Quran in the middle of Surah Al-Baqarah. The second juz starts off, starts and ends with patience. So in order to be mindful of Allah see, and, and to be devoted to Allah Ta'ala, we need to, see, to, be, to, be, to, to endure, to struggle, to go through challenges. And that's why Allah Ta'ala said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ You can't do it alone. You seek help with Allah and through your prayer. Through patience, the verse says, بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek help in your journeying to be you. Seek help in, in discovering who you are, the, the you that Allah is pleased with. You can't do it alone. So seek help with sabr and salah. Sabr and salah. Sabr here, means not only patiently enduring and persevering, and con but in conclusion, brothers and sisters, the last meaning of sabr in this part of the verse is fasting. Yes, fasting. Fasting is a component of sabr. This fasting teaches us patience, and you have to have patience to fast. So fasting reinforces sabr, and sabr is a type of fasting. It's a type of restraint, right? Fasting. Patience is a type of self-restraint. And so when Allah says, seek help, wasta'inu bisabri, with patience, not only just about patience alone, fasting is an integral, central part of developing patience. So this month is the month of patience. This month is the month of seeking help with Allah. So we're fasting in the day, praying at night. Sabr in the day, Salat at night. We're praying in the daytime too, but Salat in the sense of uh, Tarawih and, and, and Toba. So, Wasta'inu, seek help, this somebody with patience in the daytime, fasting, was Salat and prayer at night, in the middle of the night. Wa inna kabiratun. And that's a big thing. That's a big matter. Don't trivialize this, this month. Don't trivialize this time. We don't take it for granted. Every single day matters because you are shedding the old you and you're becoming a new you. You're getting more strength, more spiritual strength, more spirit, spiritual energy, and you're becoming a closer you, a better you that Allah Ta'ala will love. Loves, Allah Subhanahu And therefore, uh, this is very important. The every single day is central to us becoming who we are in this month. So this is our entry into the Quran. This is the introduction in a sense to where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants to take us, uh, to protect us from heart disease, which is the ultimate disease of forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to move us to cognizant and spiritual uh, mental uh, remembrance and awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guiding us to the right path and explaining to us what that path is and giving us the tools and the resources uh, to, to, to seek help and support along the way. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow these times to be times of resilience for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the, 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 the barakah, the blessings of our sabr and our salah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our actions be the kinds of actions that involve turning to Allah and repenting to Allah such that we earn Allah ta'ala's love both in this life and the reward of that love in the next life. Rabbana taqabbal minna 
Ya Rabb, we ask that you accept this day of fast for us. And we ask that you forgive us from all, for all of our shortcomings, not only for this day, but from the past year, from this Ramadan to the next, Ya Rabb. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah, we ask that you give us good in this life. And we ask that you give us good in the next life. And we ask that you protect us and sanctify us, fortify us uh, from any kind of torment from the grave and then the hellfire for us, our children, our parents, our loved ones, our colleagues, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And the last thing that we can say is that all praise, all thanks, all recognition, all allegiance is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of all the worlds. Jazakallah khairan. And inshallah ta'ala, we look forward to seeing you next week where we will continue, inshallah, our survey of the Quran. And the next week we will cover the next, the first uh, 10 uh, days, inshallah, the first 10 Jews, excuse me, of the Quran, summarize it in a way that is systematic and, and, and breaks it down to simplistic teachings and lessons for all of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Khalil Abdul Rashid. That was uh, wonderful. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, tomorrow we will have another Ramadan reminder with Imam, Dr. Imam Dalal Eid at uh, 5.30. So see, every, see you, see you uh, tomorrow and Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you, everyone. Okay. The meeting is now ending. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Ramadan kirim.